I don't know what part of the world you're in, but here in Toronto, soccer is everywhere. Flags of every nation are on every street, on cars, outside of houses. And the best thing is seeing everyone trying out their soccer moves. So I'm heading downtown on the subway today and I have my Hexi kit with me. I never go anywhere without my Hexi kit. And I see this young man having so much fun with a soccer ball. And then I start looking at the soccer ball and then at my Hexies and the soccer ball and my Hexies. And I think I could quilt this. And you can too. So take a minute and like this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and stay tuned and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. And today we are going to be making a paper pieced soccer ball. So the great thing about this project is you can make it totally from scrap. Scrap fabric, scrap cardstock for the paper shape, scrap batting. You can even use leftover spools of thread for the sewing. We will need to make the paper shapes for the hexes and the pentagons. The easiest way will be to order them from paper pieces. They have them in all different sizes. They have them in quantity. You just need to make sure that you buy the hexagons and the pentagons in the same size. And by same size, I mean that when the edges go together, the length of them are exactly the same. The second way that you can make these paper shapes is with a punch. You take an old, like these are just flyers that have come in the mail. You want them, you want it thin enough that it can move. It's not too stiff, but hard enough that it's gonna hold the shape and you just punch them out. And the third way is to download the template. They're on my website. I'll put a link to, down below and I put them in every size. You cut it out and then you trace it on cardstock and get these. You need 20 hexagons and you need 12 pentagons. So this ball right here is made from two inch hexagons. This one's made by a one inch. Uh, this little one is a three eighths. Step two is your scrap fabric. Line up the, the template on top of the fabric and give yourself between an eighth of an inch and half an inch. And But I just roughly cut it out. I don't do anything exact, just eyeball it. Step three, you need to wrap your fabric around your cardstock. Now with the smaller ones, I just used thread and needle going around in whip stitching. But with the larger ones, I found it much easier to use the glue. This is a glue stick that you can buy at quilting stores or online. And what's special about this glue is that it's very tacky to put on, but over time it releases, so it's not permanent. Don't worry about the blue color, it's not permanent. So I'm doing my ball in six colors. All the pentagons are going to be gray, and then there's five colors for the hexes. So this is how we'll go together. A rosette on the top, a rosette on the bottom, and in the middle is the strip of 10. So take one pentagon and take one color of each hexagon. Line one edge of each hexi against one edge of the pentagon. You're gonna make two of these, one for the top, one for the bottom. For the center strip number one, lay the hexes out in this pattern, one up, one down. Then we lay out the pentagons on the inside edge of each of the hexes, like so. For the second strip, they are the opposite, one down, one up. Pentagons lie in a similar arrangement on this side. Sew all the sides together. On the smaller ones, I did this by needle and thread. I used a ladder stitch along the edges of the hexes. But with the large ones, I found it was easier to sew it. I used a monofilament thread and a very tiny zigzag stitch. It was fussy, but it's fussy no matter which way you sew it. If you find that the corners of your hexi and your pentagon don't line up properly, 
just take your, your thumb and roll it over until it does. They should be within one millimeter of another. So it doesn't matter whether you're sewing by hand or you're sewing by sewing machine, the order that you put the pieces together is identical. So sew all your hexes to the central pentagon and to each other in the top and bottom units. In your central strips, sew all the hexes together and then the pentagons on top and the bottom. The pentagons of the center strip will go between the hexagons on the top and the bottom pieces. From here on in, it becomes quite fussy. Just continue to sew the seams together as best as you can. Don't be afraid to manhandle the cardboard. It's not precious. You can fold it or rip it out when you need to. The more pieces that you sew on, the more ball-shaped it will become. Attach the second central strip to the end of the first central strip. If you remember that no pentagon touches another pentagon, you really can't go wrong. Eventually, things will just get too crowded and you'll have to take your table off. Just continue to sew seams together, ripping out paper as necessary. When all the center strips seams are sewn together, you are ready to attach the top. Attach the top to the central strips the same way you attach the bottom to the central strips, leaving only an opening of four pieces. Remove as many papers as you possibly can, leaving only papers in those units which still have one seam still to be sewn. Now grab all that scrap batting that you have, all those strips, that from the sides of quilts that have been sitting in bags for years maybe, and chop them into small squares and stuff them in the ball. You'll be amazed how much scrap batting you actually use. Is it okay to combine your batting? You can use polyester, cotton, with the cotton blends. We're in the home stretch now, so pull out any last bits of cardboard. Before I begin, I like to use long, straight pins to help secure the seam in place. Starting at the corner, use small, invisible stitches. I'm using a double thread, and I'm sewing about eight stitches per inch. Careful not to pull the stitches too tight. We want this seam to lie flat. Before you close up, grab your batting and stuff it as much as you possibly can. last seam is the hardest. Just take it slow and make sure that final corner is tacked down tight. Make a knot and bury it. Snip and we're done. Done. It's like a, a comfort pillow. So what can they be? This can be an ornament, a stress ball, children's toy, pin cushion, I just put three pins in the bottom of this one to help it stand up straight. This can be an inside ball. It actually has the heft of a light medicine ball. A pillow. While well, you're watching World Cup final, you can... So it took me about five hours to sew this one with the sewing machine. These ones, they both took about the same length of time. It took me about a week sewing in front of the TV at night but a fast and easy craft using up all my scraps. Didn't buy anything to make this. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like this video, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Thank you everyone for all your kind comments. If you have any requests, please put them in the comments below. So what size are you gonna make?